morning. Before we start, I just want to express uh, something. I've been observing since yesterday that many of us uh, probably do not understand that we are in a worship situation. That is why we turn our backs, talk to our friends at the back, we talk to our friends on the sides, and it is very disappointing for me to see this because you are academy students. You are not elementary children anymore. And so this morning, once again, I want to ask you for the next 30, 35 minutes to please take these 30 minutes to focus on our worship. And if I see you talking to your friends or turning to the back, I will come and invite you forward. I will go and walk down to you and invite you to come forward with me. Is that okay? Yes, thank you very much. I, I just want us to have this 30 minutes so that we will learn something from our series. Because if you just came here to talk, then it is better for you to be outside. But if you are outside, then you are absent, right? And if you just came here to sleep, then probably we will provide beds up here. And so please, bear with me. We will have these 30 minutes to study our topic this morning. Thank you very much. And one thing also, after we pray later, after we pray, I notice that it is very noisy as soon as you finish praying. It's like a market. So when we finish our group prayer later on, I want you to sit down and then just take care of yourself. Okay? I don't want to hear that this church is like a palenque. Thank you very much. I hope you can understand what I'm saying because you are supposed to be examples and you do not need to be told over and over again because you are high school students. Okay. Our topic this morning is about my identity in Christ. Always the best. How many of you have ever been to a wedding? Yes. Maybe when you were smaller, you were in a wedding because you were a flower girl. Or you were a Bible boy. And you came with your... Or maybe in Indonesia, we have like a, a mini bridegroom and bride. You know? So they have another pair of small kids wearing a gown and a suit and they are the mini bridegroom and bride so they will come at the back and that's how they come to a wedding but many of us probably have been to weddings that are well prepared but normally in weddings although how good it has been prepared there is always something that will likely go wrong I remember when I got married, we got married in a, in a rented room and at the back there was a word in red, bold red letters, welcome. And I didn't want that, so I told my friends, let's decorate it, let's put a hanging cloth, white cloth and let us put doves and put my initial and my wife B and J we had it there but during the wedding ceremony everything started falling apart first the B fell down later the dove on the J fell down 
And then I keep on looking at the back. Oh, it's falling down. It's becoming a disaster. Right after that, we had our reception. The food was great. It was vegetarian. And half of it were not vegetarian. And the following day, some of my friends came to me. You know, Brian, some of us have LBM. Even one of my friends had to go to the hospital because for three days, he keeps on having LBM. And the findings in the lab says that the food was contaminated. Fecal contamination. So I was very embarrassed because there were things that went wrong in the wedding. And so maybe some of you have already experienced such kind of disasters in a wedding. And if you notice many movies depict weddings that come with disasters, sometimes up to the point of the bride canceling the wedding altogether. These are disasters in a wedding. And this morning we're going to look at the story in the Bible about Jesus' first miracle, Jesus' first signs, and it is found in John 2, verses 1 to 11. I'm going to read it for you. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. And Jesus replied, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first. Then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. You see, there is something beautiful that happened here. Jesus in verse 10 says Jesus gave the best because the wine that was served later was the best and in this particular wedding Jesus attended with his disciples and its parents and as we notice in the midst of merrymaking they ran out of wine they ran out of wine. Maybe now, if you run out of drinks, you can hurry, go to Mini Stop or 7-Eleven, buy the juice and mix it. And that's it. But before we go on, maybe we have to clarify a little bit about the word wine. Do you think that the word wine here is a wine that has alcohol like our wine today? Let me see your hands. Do you think it is wine that intoxicates? Well, let's see. In the Old Testament, wine is mentioned in 231 times in the King James Bible. It is mentioned as yayin in Hebrew, which means intoxicating fermented wine. And it is mentioned as tirosh, which is fresh grape juice. And it is mentioned as oinos, wine, which is generic unfermented, fermented in Greek, and glucose, sweet wine, or fresh juice. 
And so the question is, did the, Jesus provide alcoholic wine? You know, he made six firkins or about 160 gallons, 150 to 160 gallons. Let us imagine this. If four ounces is equivalent to one gallon and 128 ounces is equivalent to a gallon and 32 glasses of wine per gallon, that means the amount of wine that Jesus prepared at the time was 4,800 glasses of wine. How many of us are here in this church now? Can we say 400? 300? 300, 400. If it is 4,800 glasses of wine to serve us now, that will require each of us to at least drink how many glasses of wine? Ten? Ten? Keep in mind that before Jesus provided this wine, that the guests have been merrymaking. They have been doing this for quite some time. And in the Bible times, when they have weddings, it does not only go for two to three hours. We really have to remember that in Jesus' time, when they have weddings, when they have merrymaking, it will go for several days. And so, if there were that many guests, 3,000 3, guests, and say that they have already consumed all the wine in one or two days, that means they have been drinking wine for a long time. Now, if they have already been drinking wine for quite some time, that means they're all drunk if this is fermented wine, right? But if they were all drunk and Jesus prepared some more alcoholic wine, the more they will get drunk. So how does this logic come to us now if the wine that was prepared was drunk? And how can they say that this is a better wine than the first one if they were all drunk. So logically speaking, I want to explain this, that this was sweet wine. This was the wine that was not fermented. You know, because fermentation needs yeast. And in those times, fermented wine becomes fermented because of natural fermentation. It is not because they put yeast. And so let's clarify this, that Jesus made this best wine, which was better than the first one, for the people to drink later after they drank the first kind of wine. And so let's continue. In the midst of merrymaking, they ran out of wine, and Jesus' mother came to Jesus. Jesus, we ran out of wine. And so Jesus instructed them. Jesus instructed them. Pour out water. Pour out water. And came out the best wine as the master of ceremonies described it. Best wine. Probably this is similar to Welch grape juice. I don't know. But it was best wine. The master of ceremonies after tasting it said, Normally, in weddings like this, the host will prepare the bad wine first, the cheap wine, and save the best wine for later. But in this time, it is the other way around. And so what Jesus made was not only something that was second class. What Jesus made for the wedding in Cana was something that was first class. You know, if you go to you go to Divisoria or in uh, Santa Cruz, you will find lots of gadgets, electronic gadgets, even cell phones ranging from 2,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos, which matches the iPhone and everything. When you ask them to buy, when you ask them, and you, they, will, they will tell you, Sir, sir, ito po, class C. I said, Oh, ano, ano ibig sabihin ng class C? Oh, classy po kasi hindi masyado maganda. 
Ah, pero po ito, class B. Oh, what is the way class B? Oh, ah, mas maganda na po. Pero ito po yung class A. Parehas lang with original. Parehas lang, but it is not original. And so God, Jesus at this time did not give a class B or C. He made a class A wine. And Jesus' miracle at this time was not only a matter of quantity of 4,880 glasses of wine, but it was a matter of quality. You know why? Because Jesus' nature is not a second-class nature. When Jesus gives something, it is always the best. Jesus always gives the best. You know why? What will happen if Jesus rose up Lazarus from his grave but did a second-class miracle? What will happen if Lazarus woke up from the dead but he is comatose? What kind of miracle is that? Huh? What would happen if Jesus fed the 5,000 people but only 4,999 got food? One is hungry. One will complain to customer service. I did not eat yet. What kind of miracle is that? You see, what will happen if when this, this uh, possessed, demon-possessed man approached Jesus and Jesus said, Away from him, you Satan. And there was one or two demons left in him. What kind of miracle is it? So you see, Jesus gives us this example of giving the best. He gave the best in His ministry. He gave the best in His miracles. And He gave the best for everyone that came across Him. What would happen if He healed the lame man, the one that could not walk, after He jumped up and then He walked like this? What kind of miracle? So you see, my dear friends, Jesus always gave the best. Jesus gave 150 gallons of wine with such quality that would have the most inexperienced wine connoisseurs yearning for more. And so, that is how we should be. It is like when we go to a restaurant. We go to a restaurant, we eat four courses. We eat the first one, the appetizer. We eat the second one, something else. Then comes the steak. And comes the excellent food and what else? Fish. And then we are so full. We keep on eating because it tastes so good. And in the end, after we were very full, comes the best dessert. For me, the best dessert is halo halo. Comes the best dessert, but you cannot eat it anymore. But you try to eat it because it is the best of all the food that is being served to you at that time. And so now, when Jesus has produced this good wine, some of the guests at the wedding drunk themselves full to the bridegroom's original supply of standard wine. But the miracle wine, John 2 verse 10 says, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wines after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. I'm sure at that time, even though they were already full with the cheap wine, they still made room to drink some more of this best wine. They let the old wine settle first by talking, by walking or whatever, and then they had to come and taste the best wine again. And they were so full. They were so full that probably most of them never even realized that a miracle has happened. And so while Jesus is giving His best to us, pouring out His choice wine, it is our responsibility to receive it, 
to make room to receive this best wine. Maybe we are too focused on how we can be the best student in school, how we can achieve the best grades. We are too busy that we don't even open our Bibles and read it every day, that we don't even have time to pray to Jesus. You know, I saw a sign there that's on the road that says 777 prayer ongoing. Does the academy also participate in the 777 prayer? No? Yes? Do you know what is a 777 prayer? Okay, that's good. Maybe if we don't have time to pray at home, we can stop for a while as soon as we arrive in school and have 777 prayer. And so while Jesus pours out the best wine, the best for each one of us, once again, it is our responsibility to prepare room for the good wine. Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. And we don't need to worry because there is a lot, there is ample supply to go around because blessings from God are regular and can easily meet the supply and demand. We just need to ensure that our hearts and minds are open to receive the best. You know, we have, as uh, Edward has a sister, she likes eating food and saving the best for last. I remember she used to like eating eggs. And she likes only to eat the yellow egg, the yolk of the egg. So when he, she eats, she will eat everything else and leave the yellow part for the last before she eats it. And when we eat together, I sometimes finish mine. And then when I see that she still has, I will say, look, what is there, Eliza? And when she turns around, I get the yellow egg. It's very bad, no? But you see, when she turns around, she will cry because the best that she has saved is gone. But don't worry. For us, there is still plenty of best things to go around. Plenty of best miracles that Jesus wants to perform in li our lives. If only we have room. We set aside space to receive all these things and in our case God doesn't want to give the best as a last resort for us but he is continually giving the best in our lives every day every day Matthew 6 34 says therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself God takes care of us every day. His blessings are fresh for us every day. His miracles that He do for us, maybe we, sometimes we don't realize that it's a miracle. It is always the best, number one, class A, given to us. There is no failure of supply. Mrs. White, Ellen White says in Desire of Ages, page 148, each new gift increases the capacity of the receiver to appreciate and enjoy the blessings of God. He gives grace for grace. There can be no failure of supply if you abide in Him. The fact that you receive a rich gift today ensures the reception of a richer gift for tomorrow. And so what is it that we need to do? So we can continue receiving the best from Jesus. What can we do? As we mentioned just now, we have to have room to receive those blessings. And aside from that, we have to make extra action that because we are receiving the best, we have to project also the best in our lives. We have to project the best character that we can. I'm sure all of us are pathfinders here. We have to project what the, our law says 
in our daily lives at Pathfinders, as Pathfinders. We have to project uh, the best in our daily lives as Christians. We have to follow and abide by the rules that is set by the school because we are students. Project out the best because we are receiving the best. Jesus gives our new every morning. So we should wake up each morning determined to give our best effort in everything that we do. Everything that we do. And so in closing, I want to tell you a story. There was once a king. The king was so rich and he told his subjects, he told his citizens, he said, you know, I'm going to prepare you a big feast. We are going to celebrate because God's abundant blessing for us. I will prepare the best food. I will prepare the best beef that we have. The best, most nutritious vegetables that we have. And the people said, and what is our responsibility, king? And the king said, well, you just need to bring your best choice of wine. And so at the appointed day, the king provided a big jar so that the people will pour their best wine in the jar. And so one by one came the people to put in their best wine in the jar. And there was this one particular farmer. He came to the jar and he said, wow, this is such a big jar. There are thousands of us who will put the best wine in this jar. But maybe I will not put my best wine here. I will just put water. I will just put water. Anyway, what difference will my one small jar of water make to a jar that is full of best wine? And so... Slowly, while people are not looking, he got his jar of water and poured it inside the big jar. And so after everybody has already put their wine in the big jar, the celebration started. And the king officially opened the celebration. He got his royal cup, dipped the cup inside the jar, and he said, Cheers to all of us! for this celebration and he put the cup into his lips and tasted the best wine that the people were supposed to drink and you know it was pure water because everybody had the same thinking like the farmer anyway what will what will it matter all the others will put their best wine there so everybody put water for us as young people as students let us not just put water in our response to God's blessings for us let us be put the best wine the best wine in terms of our character, in terms of our relationship with God. Because that is where I, I, the, our identity lies in Christ. Our identity in Christ is to give always the best, just like what Jesus has given to us. And so, as we close, I want to give this challenge to you the best give the best in your lives as young people as students in your daily lives in your interaction with friends shun out all the worldly influences that may bring our best into class B or class C material let us always try Would you like to do this? Can I hear your say, your response? Would you like to give the best to Jesus?
I want you all to rise as we pray for this commitment to give the best for Jesus. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given Jesus Christ in our lives. And we thank you for studying this story of Christ's miracle. That when he made this wine in Cana, it was the best wine. And we know from this that Jesus always gives the best to us. His miracles are always the best in quantity and quality and he is continue pouring out the best to each of our lives we are still young dear father in many ways we will still fall along the way as we continue to follow christ as our identity but this morning i want to pray for each one of us that has stood up we may fall but please pick us up. Outstretch your hand for us. Pick us up so we can walk once again in our journey. And we can live every day giving out our best in all aspects of our life. In our obedience, in our relationship with others, in our integrity, in our honesty. And so that we may always give the best also to Jesus. Thank you, dear Father, for these young people. Thank you for this time that we have spent together. We commit our lives into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have a seat.